Hey, welcome back everybody to our channel. So today we're going to be diving into the future of the pharmaceutical industry. If you're excited about the latest innovations and trends in pharma, you're in the right place. We're going to cover all the latest and greatest in pharma for 2025. So what are the top five trends for the pharma biotech industry in 2025? A lot of crazy things happening, a lot of exciting things happening. So the first trend is this, digital transformation. So everybody knows about what's happening with AI, machine learning, that type of stuff has just got a lot of attention over the last 12 to 18 months. And digital transformation is going to make a huge splash in the pharmaceutical industry. Pharma companies are really embracing digital technologies from AI to machine learning, and they're using it in things like drug discovery, to be able to expedite and speed up the approval of drugs and the development of different drugs, data management blockchain. They're going to be developing and revolutionizing how we deliver medications a lot more readily. One of the things though that pharma companies need to worry about is making sure that they're using the these AI tools compliantly. Because remember, with the use of AI, there's a lot of liability because some of that information is going to healthcare providers, it's going to patients. So although AI is very exciting for the pharmaceutical industry, given the nature of what they do, it's also a potential liability and risk. So making sure that they're actually doing the, and actually using rather AI um, properly and compliantly so that no misinformation goes out to patients and healthcare providers is really important. I actually had done a webinar a few months ago with a very well-known attorney in the world of AI, Alex Shandro out of the UK. And we talked a lot about AI and the issues that life sciences companies, pharmaceutical companies need to think about when they're implementing AI. I'll put a link to that webinar below. But definitely digital transformation is a huge trend that's going to be coming in pharma companies over the next uh, year or so. And we see this. Companies are investing heavily in digital tools to improve efficiency, reduce costs, and ultimately they want to enhance patient outcomes, right? They want to see more patients on these medications and they want to see them do better. So I would definitely say you can expect to see more virtual clinical trials, more predictive analytics, more personalized medicine driven by big data. So trend number one, digital innovation. What about trend number two? So the second big trend I would say is personalized medicine. Remember that today, with the advent of a greater understanding of pharmacogenomics, the big trend of personalized medicine is going to be huge, I think, in 2025. We've seen it with CRISPR and other types of technologies. But with advancements in genomics, biotechnology, personalized medicine is definitely on target to becoming a really a greater reality for more patients. So tailoring treatments based on an individual's genetic makeup ensures higher efficacy, means more effectiveness for the drug, and fewer side effects. How many times do you watch a commercial for a drug and you hear that whole list of side effects? Some of them are more common, some of them are less common, but imagine a world where you understand an individual's genetic makeup and you can tailor certain types of ter therapies and target certain types of therapies so you can minimize these types of side effects. So I would definitely say in 2025, we can expect more targeted therapies, more precision-based drugs that are really going to transform ultimately how we approach diseases. Think about, for example, cancer, one of the number one killers in the world today, diabetes, and especially rare diseases, rare genetic disorders. Um, I used to work in a rare disease area called cerebral tendinous xanthomatosis, or I know it's a mouthful, or CTX. And, uh, you know, it was, it was really devastating for these patients. If they couldn't get treatment, they would end up, unfortunately, in a really bad situation and would cut their life short. So I definitely think this is a big one. Number three, telemedicine integration. Telemedicine integration. COVID's changed a lot of things for us. Today, doctors and patients are more and more connecting via telemedicine. And so that is really shifted the relationship in many ways between doctors and patients, and especially all the younger doctors who were trained during COVID, they understand this. So COVID-19 has accelerated the adoption of telemedicine, and it's definitely here to stay. Pharma companies are actually partnering more and more with telehealth providers to offer, for example, remote consultation, consultations and digital health services. Um, at the company that I run, the ACMA, we've gotten a lot more interest in things like health literacy training, helping people better understand how physicians, especially how to interact with patients when it comes to making sure they feel heard and understood in a remote setting. So this trend is not only going to improve access to healthcare, but it's also going to support medication adherence. Remember, patient adherence is a big problem today 
in um, the world, meaning that patients oftentimes don't adhere to their medication. So it'll definitely help with that. It'll help with chronic disease management through maybe continuous monitoring through, through sophisticated devices and virtual support. So definitely will be on the lookout for telemedicine as a big area um, of development in 2025. The fourth big one is advanced drug delivery systems advanced drug delivery systems. So think about nanotechnology, think about smart pills, right? All these types of things that, that you know, you might've heard of or might've seen in these futuristic sci-fi movies. Well, these things are becoming a reality where pharma companies are thinking about more innovative delivery methods that can enhance the efficacy and really the convenience of treatments, right? So these types of things are important. Implantable devices. We already know that we can implant certain devices into uh, a patient to be able to control their diabetes, be able to control weight issues and management of weight. So these are really beneficial, especially for uh, diseases or treatments that require a sustained drug delivery over a longer period of time. Think about pain management, mental health, chronic illnesses, all these types of things. And there's going to be a future where you don't have to take your medication once a day. You might be able to not actually kind of set it and forget it once it's been implanted into your body. The last big trend, trend number five that I would say is related to, there's because there's a greater number of specialty drugs coming to the market more and more, a lot of these biologics, a lot of these more sophisticated products with more sophisticated mechanism of action, the, 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 the last big trend that I see that's gonna be really, 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 really important is more and more pharmaceutical companies are going to rely on two types of uh, team organizations or field organizations to get the word out about their drug. One are medical science liaisons. And if you don't know what a medical science liaison is, I'll leave a link in the video below, uh, below the video. I'll leave a link in the, below the video to educate you on me what medical science liaisons do. But medical science liaisons are essentially individuals that work for a pharmaceutical company that are, have an advanced degree, usually an MD, a PhD, a PharmD, and they go out and educate healthcare providers. So because they have advanced, they have advanced degrees, they can talk to them at the same level, right, as a peer. And so because they have this advanced clinical training, they can talk about more sophisticated and advanced concepts, which are going to be really important, for example, in specialty drugs and specialty products. So I think medical science liaisons, the number of medical science liaisons is going to boom. It's going to go up significantly. Um, in the last 10 years, it's gone up over 300%. I think it's going to go up another probably 30% in 2025. The other big area is uh, for pharma companies is more specialty reps, specialty pharmaceutical sales reps. So that skill set, if you have a good skill set where you can be a really effective specialty pharmaceutical rep, or if you are a pharma rep, a traditional pharmaceutical rep, and you want to get into the specialty side, 2025 is going to be the year to do it. And now is the year to apply to that. Um, we actually really focus a lot um, at, at the company that I run, the ACMA, on training and certifying people in the area of specialty pharma sales. It's a huge area, really, really important. So if it's something that you're interested in, I would definitely look into it from a career perspective. There's a lot of opportunity and growth there. So there you have it. Those are the five trends for the uh, pharmaceutical industry over the next uh, year. Uh, make sure that you let us know in the comments below any other things that you think are going to be a big trend. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more updates on the latest and greatest in pharma and healthcare. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.